So in this episode, we're going to make a salumi that's called brazaula, brazaula, and it's made from beef. So we're going to start with an eye round. This is around three pounds. And what you have to do is you have to make sure it's completely trimmed of all the fat and silver skin. I've gotten most of it off already. You see what I'm doing here is I just get a nice filleting knife underneath. I pull up on it and I turn the knife under like that. I get the last bit of it off. Sometimes it's really slippery and you may need to grab a paper towel to, to do that. So now I've got that ready to go. Okay, so that's nice and clean. Nice, no, you know, because the silver skin or the fat, whatever, it would, it would prevent the cure from uh, getting into the meat on that side. So now we're going to do the cure. And what I have to do here is I'm going to take, this is two uh, tablespoons of kosher salt, Morton Kosher's kosher salt. This is two tablespoons of sugar. Then I have a tablespoon of cure number two, Prague cure number two, pink salt. It's a curing agent. Um, and uh, you can get it, there's a lot of different places you can get it from, and it really helps to, to the cure to move along. And then I've got what, I've got a couple of uh, teaspoons of whole black peppercorn. I've got uh, a tablespoon of chopped rosemary. I have a teaspoon of, table, it's a, a couple of teaspoons, a tablespoon actually of thyme leaves. And then I've got uh, I like a half a dozen juniper berries. I kind of cracked them to give them a head start. I'm going to put them in this grinder here. And what I want to do is I want to turn this into a, into a powder. So this way I can rub it on the, um, on the meat. And of course, you know, with fresh rosemary in there, fresh thyme in there, you know, it's not going to become a perfect powder, but it'll be fine. It'll be nice. And yeah, look at that. Okay, so now I dump that in here. And I've essentially got this nice powder here. Okay. So, um, this is a double dose of this stuff. I'm actually only going to put right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take about half of this. Oh, let's see. That's about, that's a little less than half. So I'll have to put some more. All right. I'm going to rub this really well with about half of that cure that I just made and get it all around. I, I'm going to rub it, rub, 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 rub. Okay, like I said, I use a little bit less than half, so I'm going to finish this up. That's about half. You don't have to be too precise with it. You just want to make sure you get half of it. You want to coat the meat entirely around and on the ends. And let's see, is that about half? So now we got, now we're at half. All right, that's good. I got this done, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it in this Ziploc bag. It's, this is a two-gallon bag. It's, a good, it's a, just about a perfect size for this three-pound eye round. I'll stick it in here. And then I get my flap and I roll it up and seal it. Now this then is going to go in the fridge um, for about a week. And uh, Every couple of days, I'm going to turn it and rub it a little bit so that I, you know, kind of redistribute the cure in there to make sure I get everything. At the end of a week, I'm going to pull it out, and, and what will happen is there will be a lot of liquid in here. I'm going to dump the liquid out. I'm going to put the other half of this cure on it, put it back in the fridge for another week, and then uh, when that's done, we'll come back, and I'll show you the next steps to get it ready to hang and dry. So um, we'll see you a little bit. Okay, so the brazala has uh, cured for two weeks. I took it out of the drying chamber and I rinsed off the excess cure that was still on it. I patted it dry and then I needed to let it sit out for a couple of hours. I sat it out for a couple of hours on a rack and now I'm tying it so that I can hang it. Um, and when I finish tying it, I will then weigh it and figure out how much it weighs before I put it in. That's kind of an important step in all of this. And so the next thing I'm going to do after I weigh it is I'm going to spray it with something called Bactifirm 600. Now, Bactifirm 600 is a naturally occurring mold. It's referred, it's a Penicillium nalgevesa. And uh, it's easily available in freeze-dried form 
from the internet and you just reconstitute it when you're ready to use it. And it, what it does, okay, it, it's, it's really harmless, all right? It's a harmless beneficial surface mold. And what it does is it really is the intent is to win the battle over um, pathogenic bacteria. So it basically it's going to protect this meat from other bacteria, from harmful mold and spoilage. Now, it's not essential to do this when um, I'm doing a whole muscle. Uh, it's definitely essential when you're doing like a sausage, which is ground. But because my drying cave that, I've, uh, that I showed you in episode 81 was, is kind of like it's a contrivance and it's not a natural cave. It doesn't have natural occurring uh, bacteria and stuff in it. Um, my cave, my cave could become infected. It could become infected with bad stuff. So even though I don't, you know, it's not really necessary to do it for a whole muscle, I'm, I do it because I'd rather be safe than in the situation where I get, you know, other molds forming and I have to kind of take them off vinegar or something like that. So I prefer to, to do that. So here's the Back to Firm 600. Uh, it's reconstituted. It's in this sprayer bottle. And I just spray it all over this. And that's going to allow it to grow this beneficial. You've probably seen it before on sausages, maybe the dried sausage or salamis that you bought us, that white powdery mold. So this is going to go down in the drying chamber and in three to four weeks hopefully it will uh, lose 30 percent of its weight that's the target um, and we'll see how it turns out so here's the aged brazala it uh, took about two and a half weeks lose 30 percent of its weight and it's got like i said it's got that beneficial white mold on it so that protected it and uh, it's no big deal to remove it you just uh just kind of scrape a little bit off like that see and it's a very powdery definitely uh, the good mold, is, which is powdery as opposed to kind of fuzzy. And I can take the string off here. And so once I got that, I'm just going to take a little off the top for now. You take some of that off. And then you can, then you can use a, a wet, a damp cloth. You don't have to get it all off. As I said, it's, it's not going to hurt you. It doesn't really ruin the flavor of anything. I'll take that off. All right, now, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to square off the end a bit because so that I can put it through this slicer. So square off the end, and this little piece is going to sort of end up getting tossed. Look at how that is, nice and aged beef. All right, and now, got my slicer, my home electric slicer. Let's slice a few pieces. Got to get it, get it right in there. We'll get it. There we go. We're starting to get it. Yeah. Okay. Nice and thin. There you have it. Brazala aged beef. How does that taste? Hmm. Oh, tastes like dried beef. Looks really good. Got some good flavor. What do I do with this? Hey, you know, slice it up, just eat it, have it with some bread. Here's another technique, another idea. Serve it drizzled with a little extra virgin olive oil, throw some capers on top, a little bit of black pepper, and shaved Parmesan cheese. So that's it, folks. It took a few weeks, but here we have one of the salumis, Brazala aged beef.